Welcome to the Spiritual Forum, everyone. I'm so glad you're here. I'm here for part two with my guest, Yael Green, and we had such an interesting conversation in the last hour. I'm looking forward to hearing more. Um, I just want to remind you of a few things. Again, my retreat, Whole Planet Spirituality, October 19th through 22nd at Unity Village, and it's really about of really about lining up actions, values, feelings, and all of that so that we are peaceful within ourselves. And you can find out more at the spiritualforum.org slash retreat. I really appreciate everyone who's listening. And I don't, I keep forgetting I'm on YouTube as well. My, most of my audience is audio podcasts, but I'm on YouTube as well, trying to build that up a little bit. And so if you can check that out, if that's your preferred way of viewing, um, that's always kind of fun. I do have the the audio podcast is always a little higher quality because I have that one professionally edited, but um, I'm on both platforms. So welcome again, y'all green. I'm Thank so you. glad you're here. <laughs> it's, it's, um, I don't have a huge introduction. I'll just kind of like uh, summarize the introduction from last time that you're a hybrid human embodied portal, water technologist and intuitive guide. And we just had such a fascinating conversation in the last hour. Um, we set this up so that we would have two hours because I know that water is a focal point of your, your healing um, modality and your experience here on this 3D plane. Mm -hmm. And so that's basically what we're going to be talking about. Uh, today in this hour. And I really don't have any specific questions about this. So I kind of want you to start, uh, just start talking about it, and then we'll go from here. Okay, that sounds good. Well, I think just introducing water, everyone has a different relationship, whether they feel like they have no relationship with it at all. That is, there is some relationship in some realm of whether they know that it comes through and brings them something that they put in a glass or they cook with or they bathe with or they go out to the ocean or a lake and see it or it be or it is a medicine and it is a beingness there's such a broad range of our relationship with it and it's for me it's always been a part of how I move in this world, who I am. I bring through the, the energy of this medicine, and I call it a medicine. I call it a, a being, and it is simply because that's how I've always interacted with it. It's been... I have used it in everything that I've ever done. I was a competitive swimmer. When I was a physical therapist, I worked in the water six hours a day with people. I've always used it as this container that teaches us in a very gentle way, in a very patient way. It is, we've talked about mythologies, every, there is a water story that has every water uh, origination story in it that's simply like it is an origination it is where we've originated it teaches us how to move how to be how to interact with everything around us simply because on the basic facts of everything 90% of a molecule in our body is made of water. Mm -hmm. it, then if we think of the entire body itself varies between what people say 70 to 80% of us is made of water. So we are meant to be fluid beings and we came from water. Just because we are walking on land right now, that's a more difficult path for us than when we were moving in the water. You look at how beings move in the water. It's a very different way. They, they spiral with the energy. We move in very specific planes of motion. 
front, back, side, side, and sometimes diagonals. Not, not very much. There is a spiral movement and a, a movement with the way water is. So if you've ever been in water, you know that it, it moves you, literally. It moves you, which means you have a direct relationship with it. And here we're forcing ourselves into, into these different movements in a very different way. You know, when you think about it, when you look at a very fluid dancer, they are they move the body in spiral movements and it's energized literally from these waters in our body. And we can go deep into the science of water and the body and how movements and electrical potentials and uh, how structured water is within our body and happy to go there as well. Um, but that is literally how all of our movements occur is through this knowledge that sits in the water. Because within every cell, extracellular and intracellular, there is water. And that's what allows transmission of everything to happen. We know that things happen in the body when there's stickiness. We know that when, you know, joints, cartilage isn't, doesn't have enough water, it becomes sticky. And then that's when we have pain. So water and that movement and the way it moves is really imperative to our state of fluidity, which we talked about before. It was that, mm -hmm. that we are able to move in form and formlessness. So I'll start there and see if there are any, you know, yeah, that's really, yeah, yeah, that's really, really interesting. I, I, um, I have really profound personal memories with water. Mm -hmm. I, and I, I also need to be around water. I, I've, I, I've, I haven't really lived, lived right by the ocean, but I'm either close to a lake or like, I've got a pond on my property. I'm looking at right there. There's got a lake over here. And when I lived in Chicago, I was close to the lake and the, and the lake in Chicago is like an ocean. Um, and, and I was, was not that far from water, but I remember, um, Gosh, I remember there was a time, it was in Texas, in, in the Galveston Bay. I remember going out, out in the waves and just floating, just floating. I probably was out there for an hour, just floating on my back and letting the waves, you know, bounce me up and down. And I felt so safe. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think about an entire lifetime and how many days go by that I really have no memory of. Mm -hmm. And I do have memory of that. And, you know, I have memory of obviously several other things, but I mean, yeah. it was a distinct feeling. And the feeling that I had was I felt safe, mm -hmm. even though from another person's perspective, I was probably being tossed up and down on the waves, but it, it just was so lovely to float. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I, I really do identify with this kind of soul connection mm -hmm. with with water yeah. i i it's um it's something that's so alluring and i really feel sad if i'm too far away from it actually if i think about it it's really interesting to think about so you say though that we come from water you are you thinking like from are you talking like from evolutionary like all all creatures have come from out of the water is that what you're thinking? Every, exactly everything okay. everyone evolutionary walked out from the water i mean and you think about any because life you always hear life is water like how why is that one because it is what supports life in this form right when you when we did a mars when we looked on mars what they were looking for was water signs right. of water that's the only way that in this form we could survive anywhere is with that element right and i think it's so strange that we're comprised so highly of water and have no real or have very little um conscious sense of that mm. um, except that we do need to hydrate ourselves and we are attracted to water and so mm -hmm. that you know there's definitely a, a tie to water but mm -hmm. i think most people aren't like walking around conscious that you know 70 to 8 percent of my body is 
water, you know. <laughs> and it's that is simply a fact. Yeah. But it moves when it becomes when we embody it, it means we had a sensation and we had an experience of it like you did. Yes. So the the facts again sort of allow our brain to have something to hold on to that we can then drop into an experience of it and that's where we gain that's where it's sort of waiting for us to have a relationship with it and it's it's it is always here and it the thing is it doesn't have to be acknowledged it has this sense of it will still do what it does and inform and be as it is without even needing acknowledgement of who it is, which is pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's like fire. Fire is very like, it wants you to know who it is. Like if we look <laughs> elementally, it wants you to know. Wind, the same thing. It's like, geez, wind. <laughs> it's it's going to blow you away. Like when it's in its element, they want you, but water doesn't do that until it seems like there needs to be something said, which is when we have large bursts of water. But we like, know that also like a tsunami or something. Yeah, a flood or hurricane or, yeah. Mm -hmm, okay. mm -hmm. And even that, even that, that's coupled with winds. <laughs> usually it's, it's something else that. yeah that's true <laughs> yep and it it can shape itself to go into the, even the smallest things where you don't know that there was even a way for it to get in so it it enters in those smallest places in the liminal spaces that we don't even expect which is why it's so potent because we think there's no possibility and then little drops come in and show us there is. It's like when you look at concrete and there's this green something growing out of the concrete. That is its essence. That it, where you think everything is closed, it can enter, right? Because how many times, like, I had a garage flood like three times. And I'm like, where did that come in at? Like, we literally redid the foundation. We redid the drywall. Put a, How did that get in? The water, you mean, like water exactly. comes in, even though you've blocked it even, all out. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, there's always an opening. So it teaches us that there can always be an opening, no matter how closed we feel like things are, we think things are, we see that they are, they are never fully permanent. There is an impermanence to everything that allows reshaping, right? When I... I love this guy. He doesn't, he's not alive anymore, but his name is Victor Schoberger. We call him the water wizard because he was in, lived in Austria in the late 1800s. And he basically sat with and studied water and how it becomes, how we get water into a spring, which is the most alive water that we can experience. So if you've ever experienced a spring, you know that it tastes different. It feels different. There's, it's alive. And it literally is alive because what makes water alive is that it's come from a place and it's gone down the mountain and it's gone underground and it's interacted with all of the earth and then come up into the, to the light and gained that. And it's shape-shifted and gathered everything. And then when it finally ends up at the spring, it has an entire life full of knowledge that and information that it holds within its matrix which is a very specific matrix the structured water has a very specific hexagonal matrix that is strong which is why it holds so well but if it comes up any sooner we call it juvenile water like it hasn't matured mm. so when we put water and we gather and we put it in pipes it deforms it so we end up getting water that's not as alive as it could be and why do we need water that's alive because we want it to interact with another living being this shape which is mostly water to inform it so we say that everything that has ever happened all information all knowledge the akashic fields all those things all of that is contained in a single drop of water 
it is yielding and it is like it it can wear away rocks slowly it mm -hmm. yields to what's there and it also keeps its shape so the thought of yielding and keeping a shape mm -hmm. that we don't have to go into situations and completely yield everything that there's a way that we move as humans that is both yielding and structured at the same time which is Eastern modalities of movement and thought, right? We, we allow things to pass by and that's the way we move, that we interact with them, but we're not resisting. We don't give up everything and come into a situation. Right. So, okay. I see that. Uh, water also has many phases to it because there's steam and there's ice and snow and hail and liquid. So it does well changing and transitioning. Yes, it sure does. <laughs> it doesn't fight off or resist being something different because it always knows in in essence the molecule is always the same right right it just depends on uh how much there is of it and how close they are together but it always is the same molecule so it has a knowing of itself that is its source knowing it know it it essentially always knows that and then it shifts into the environment that's necessary for it to support and expand seamlessly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and every chemical does have different phases, so it's not unique in that way. No, no other, nothing else has this many anomalies and this many phases. Actually. Okay. There's okay. like 80 different anomalies of water because literally why is ice floating? This is a very okay. simple one. Be it shouldn't float. It's dense. It's more dense. Right, right, right. This is there's there's like 80 other ones that are weird like that, but it doesn't have that many. Everything else doesn't have that many phases. Okay. As water does. Yeah. Okay. I'd really be interested in a source on that. So if you can provide that someday, I'd, I'd like to take a look at reading all that. That's really interesting. Gerald Pollack. I mean, there's a, a million of them, but Gerald Pollack is one of the ones now that you can read tons on his site. He's a, he's up in Seattle. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, also this yielding and keeping shape is, it's just such a wonderful metaphor. Um, I I'm also, of course, since I always have a spiritual religious kind of perception about things, mm -hmm. I'm thinking about how water was used in baptism, <laughs> you know, this in every religion, actually, it was okay. In Say more about them, that. There's there, I think I recently saw someone who put together, or there's a book actually on it, of every single uh, ritual work with water. Um, I yeah, I did download it recently. Okay, well, if you can provide that to me, I'll add that link. I, yeah. If you yeah, if you remind me, I'll I'll yeah do that. Uh, not the easiest book to read, but <laughs> <laughs> I get that. <laughs> um, yeah, in in every because we have this origination you know our all origination stories are based on the flood all right. of them right there is no religion that doesn't have the origination story as a flood so that being our origination anything that has to do about rebirthing has water involved in it whether it's baptism whether it's uh the mikvah there's much lesser known rituals as well but those are two big ones um why do we go in and because it because it allows us to change our state it's often like when muslims use it before prayer like it changes our state of being mm -hmm. and is a marker that's what all ritual is anyways mm -hmm. they're markers of state changes mm -hmm. and water because it was our origination it was our source is the way that we can use something that is tangible to signify that it's i mean every civilization was built on used to be built on a water source mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's not that way anymore because we put it through pipes but right it was that way yeah, there's rivers was, and the oceans and the ports and yeah. It, yeah, the Nile, everything was built on that because that's where 
that's what feeds us and we remember who we are and we transition and it allows us to transition back to that in sacred moments so we move from sacred moments to just moments of you know normalcy and we and it makes that transition for us so the you just said we remember who we are so do you use water in in healing uh, as a way to for people to remember who they are i do so when i work in the water i'm actually doing a retreat in uh tulum and it's a working in the cenotes so yes when i do retreats we do and we do a lot of work in the water or even if i'm just uh working with clients that i'm doing in person work to use the physical space of, because you lose it when you're in, when you're in that space, you immediately lose your sense of time and space. Mm -hmm. You don't know, right. You it's, you don't know where you are in space mm -hmm. and all of a sudden it's been an hour and it feels like five minutes, right? <clears throat> That's an eight in it. It creates this container. So once you're in that space, the body is able and the brain is able to sort of turn off and then we're able to go into the deeper space that we can do that traveling with which is where we remember who we are where we came from okay okay because i i do think that the the short story i talked about in the beginning about my own experience on exactly. the ocean it was also transcended space time it yeah. wasn't just that i felt safe i it did i i could have been out there for I could have been there for four days. It, I mean, I, I, I don't know how long I was out there. Oh. I had no sense of time. Correct. And, and um, so I do, I do get that. Um, so, so how would just the average person, you have your retreat, but is there, what can we each do to integrate water into our lives to help facilitate our own sense of peace and transcending space and time, remembering who we are. Do you have ideas on that? Like what we would do daily with water? I'm not, I think this is why I never loved when I was a physical therapist, I was never, I never loved the other part of here are the exercises you need to do. And this is going to get you here. I hated that part. And so, because <laughs> I never believed it. It's like, it doesn't matter if you do these exercises, it may or may not get you there. So whatever, if you want to do them great, if you don't, I don't care. So got it. Okay. The there it's the calling to it. If you are called to it, because again, it, it's not, it doesn't impose itself. Right. On, I hear you. So it's a, not like everybody should go do this, but if you're called, if you're called to water being a part of your therapy or part of your yep. your own evolution your own experience of yourself your own inner journey mm -hmm. um then i i suppose there are no things to do but the water will answer you exactly so when because i have had this long relationship with water also water is very galactic it is also obviously in the cosmic realm as well that it I don't have to be in water with someone. It is, if I do sessions just like this or in groups, it is teaching through me all of all that it is because it holds all information. So we can limit it to its physical properties and that's fine. There's plenty of things we can do. We can create structured water. There's devices that we can do that use we create structured water with so we can look at it and relate to it on a physical level, for sure. There's plenty of information out there about how to do that. We can relate to it on an energetic level. We can relate to it as this medicine, this teacher for us. So it really depends on how do we, what is our relationship and how does that develop? Because, and how do we ask questions? I always encourage people like, oh, this came to me like, did you ask, why don't you ask a question of it? Because I'm never going to know your relationship. I, it doesn't matter where someone channels something. It is still about your relationship. Mm -hmm. You develop the relationship. You ask questions. And can I ask questions of water? 
for sure. Like everyone wants a job. Like my pup down here, she wants a job. She wants something to be given to do, right? Otherwise she doesn't feel great in life. As, as we do, we want jobs to do too. It makes us feel good. It makes right. us feel purposeful. It's the same thing with water. Like I can ask it for to be in this session like before okay here's like i just say here's you're here this is your turn and this our recording now is a very different energy than the one an hour ago right Right. very different because it's coming through this is it's time like i just love being this vessel for it coming through so it depends on the relationship and it's slow you don't just date someone and then all of a sudden you're in, you know, a marriage. Maybe some people. <laughs> Unfortunately. <but> really. <laughs> <For> some people. <laughs> a, a relationship develops. And that takes that time. And sometimes water shows itself and sometimes I show myself. And it's that dance that we do that really develops a deep relationship with it, which is any relation, could be any relationship. Yeah. And I think that what's missing for so many of us is just that remembrance that we can engage with the natural world. Exactly. You yeah. know, we, we see it. I'm sitting inside my house and last night there was this huge rainstorm and I see water now and I see trees now, but I can look at it as some of these objects that are out there, or I can look at the, as engaging, you know, some opportunity to engage with another life. And Mm -hmm. so I think we forget, we we talked a little bit about tribal peoples in the last hour. We're so disconnected in that way. So we forget to engage. I can engage with the water on my Mm -hmm. property. I can engage with the water in my glass for that matter. I can engage with the trees, the light, the wind, but I, I, I don't because I have this forgetfulness about my connection with all that is. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's that remembrance and then creating some moments with it. It's not like you have to be out there for an hour. This could be a moment that you walk from your front door to your car. Yeah. That's all it needs. This isn't, doesn't have to be some major to do. We have those moments and it's like, I don't have to talk to the person every single day for an hour. I could just text like, hope you're having a great day. Yeah. So really, is this is about uh, in, re-engaging our relationship from with water, from whence we came, or we have some sort of primal connection to, to yeah. re- reconnect in some way. And I love your metaphor of the text message, because I think people think, oh my gosh, I've got to create an hour ritual. I don't have time for that. Or, you know, I've got to go on a retreat. I'm sure your retreat is lovely, but I'm not sure everybody can, can do that. So it's like, absolutely. Yeah. Right. So they kind of cut it off and, but Mm -hmm. I can, or I'm not by a beautiful body of water. I'll do it when I get to the beach, but you could also engage with the water that's in your glass. Mm -hmm. Or in your body. Remember? Or in your body. Exactly. There's another remembrance. Yeah. (laughs) It's really hard to get. <laughs> solid <laughs> things, solid things seem so solid. <laughs> I know. I know. They do. Yeah. They do. It's that, yeah, and I love how you put it. We're really just he, again here for remembering to engage in relationship and relating. We don't have to make it into any big deal. Like, okay, I'm now texting someone. Okay, is this going to be something? Does it need to, should I define, is it a friendship? Am I going to define it something? Are we now going to like see each other for like, call? Like, could I just relate? What would it be like to just relate? Yeah. Sometimes it can feel a little scary because that container of the story helps like, okay, we're friends. Okay, we're this. <laughs> Okay. All right. Now I know like, but to just relate and let that be, that's going to literally lead to the container that is aligned with how you relate to each other. Yeah. Okay. All right. Something just came to me that this may be seem a little weird to you. Um, but, uh, like in, in Genesis, whether you take the Bible literally a story, you know, Mm -hmm. to me, it's, it's wonderful allegory. Um, In in that beginning of humankind, uh, humans were given the diet of fruit. And I'm thinking fruit is alive and filled with water. 
And I'm thinking about how much we cook food and how we cook the water out of it. Mm. And I'm just wondering about this kind of Mm. dichotomy between how we're living today versus uh, putting putting, uh, nutrients in our bodies or or foods in our bodies that are filled with the water that that we're kind of craving and kind of finding the balance of. But we're we're just that's another disconnect. Instead, we do all this cooking. And I'm not trying to make cooking wrong because cooking tastes so good. But you know, it's like it's kind of metaphorically a weird thing we're doing. Yes. And the thing is, hydration uh, is not necessarily about drinking eight glasses of water. Hydration, because that actually doesn't hydrate you. I will tell you that. And when you're thirsty, you're already past, you're way past dehydration. What hydrates you is the foods that have water within it. That's actually what's hydrating. Because if I'm going to put liquid through, it's mostly just going to go right through my system. When I put foods that are hydrating in, it gives the body a chance to actually break it down and process it and know what's there. So that's actually what hydrates you. Yes. So that'd be like fruits and salads and uh, living Green things. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yep. So exactly. that's another way to be in relationship with right. water and your body and to exactly. honor that whole balance. Right. And it doesn't force you like, am I on my sixth glass? I better write this down on my app, which glasses I'm in and how many glasses I've had. I haven't had the gallon. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, like, I've never been able to to imagine in my mind ancient peoples getting two gallons of water. I mean, how do they do that? <laughs> how do, exactly? How do they do All that? of they, them. <laughs> they couldn't. Exactly. Have. They're picking right. cherries off the tree and oranges and things like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So exactly. I think that's another another really way to look at how to mm-hmm. honor your body, how to honor the the water in your yeah. body and life yes. itself is to to try to eat of the tree, the tree that has life. Life is water. Yes. Water is life. Yes. That is that representation. Right yeah, there. putting life life into your life makes mm-hmm. life flourish. Okay. Right. Um so then the other thing that came to me is the things we do to our water supply. I saw this video and, and, you know, maybe it's just video. Um, oh, it's actually about cancer. And it talked about how many chemicals are in, is in bottled water because of the bottling process and how mm-hmm. our city water has fluoride and other and medicines and chemicals and these mm-hmm. things that we humankind in this 3D thing that we've chosen yep. to experience, how for some reason we, we're in this world that does these things to our natural, beautiful water. Mm-hmm. And I'm just kind of curious what you, what your reflections are on that. You know, we've, we've, it's, I, we've got this thing of like, how do we get, because we've come so separate and so huge, we're trying to supply the necessary elements to people, but it's hard to do that. I mean, we weren't necessarily meant to live in cities with over a million people in them. Mm -hmm. And so how do we support that? And the only way we've found is to kill off water and all of these other pieces. So it's the only way in the current structure that we have. And that's what we've put, like, if we were in smaller, well, one, there's a lot of people in this world. Too many people, probably. <laughs> and so we're not able to live in smaller pods that we can actually support in the way that doesn't disrupt the actual n- nutrition in the system. Yeah, I, mean, I think we could. I just don't think that we we think that's going back, you know. But I, I do think that going forward, we could choose to live differently. We could choose to. I mean, I would. I thrive in that space much more. I'm like I like being alone and a lot of times on my own, and then a little community. But in the smaller things, it's 
Yeah. I mean, to have, absolutely. to have, I mean, to me, this is, this is possibility. I mean, to be <laughs> creating smaller communities that are like-minded and, you know, people have all these different way viewpoints, but I mean, yep. maybe find the people who want to live together in a certain way and yep. we create our community and you guys over there, you like to live yep. together in another way. You create your community and then we all have yeah. our ways of honoring our bodies and our lives and yep. we don't have to war against it. You're fine over there. We're fine over here. Mm -hmm. And so I do think that the city state thing is, is conditioning. It's something that we, we definitely, yeah, that we've inherited yep. and we think we need to continue it. Yep. But who knows what's next? I mean, I was just in New York for a week and, you know, spent time with people who are building intentional communities. Mm -hmm. And I've never felt like I'm having a long time because I, in LA it's just different that because it's smaller there these communities are really alive and you can feel this desire and threads of new new really nutritious in all ways and you in know, New York it, City yeah oh wow that's so I, interesting. I was in Brooklyn I guess Brooklyn's a big part but I spent it was in Brooklyn and there's all of the there's intentional communities and they're creating these spaces really i mean i'm curious and a lot of people are doing some upstate communities so there are definitely this, i think it's happening. happening yeah i think it's happening. happening i it i it's not where i, I new york city is not where i imagined <laughs> i'm thinking more like tulum where your retreat is <laughs> but i love that i love that it can yeah. happen anywhere you know like you don't have to find some jungle you know, that mm. has been in, in Mexico that's untainted no. or something that you can create it around around you. And I think that's something yeah. I'd like to encourage our listeners to be imagining too. I think I think that I've mentioned this before on my podcast, we kind of have a crisis in imagination that we just don't, mm -hmm. we kind of think iteratively, but we yep. can imagine something completely different. And it doesn't have to be just an iteration on what we've already been mm -hmm. living in. And mm -hmm. this idea of how we can live in communities and how we can create uh, sustainable life together without some big, you know, government thing making us do mm -hmm. stuff. Um, yeah. That's so inefficient um, that we can yeah. we can we can just do this on our own. Yeah, we as we start to learn to create safe containers and possibilities for understanding conflict within those containers. I think that's the other thing is like we are going to come up against resistance and conflict as long as we can nurture those spaces for it and for resolution and for not our, you know, running away or going head to head, that we start to learn this in our essence is where we're moving towards. You know, we've had it before. We've had it before, but it's we can't remember that. And we've so had it before, that. meaning we've had this a civilization like that before. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yep. It's do you want to say more about that? Uh, I mean, you know, same thing that we like, we are constantly going on these longer cycles right. where we've, where we've had working in unity and understanding conflict. And now we're at more resistance, but this is what, again, we need tension and we get to ten, tension, 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 whether that's for 20 minutes with another person or whether that's for 500 years, the tension builds and then we release. So we're always doing this. It just depends on how many years and what it looks, what okay. it looks like. All so, right. You know, that's, All right. that's the key. Yeah. And I just want to say for people who are listening and not, not seeing, when you say they're always doing this, it's kind of, oh. a, it's kind of that expansion so. and, and contraction or that movement in and out. Um, yes. The breathing. <laughs> the breathing. It's literal, literal breathing. Yeah. Right. The lungs. People. That's a really great metaphor. Also the, the, the taking in. And the exhale, mm -hmm. that's, that's, yeah. And I, I think that's a really, really great way to look at, at the conflict that we feel that it's just the tension and the conflict. It's just, we can make it long, we can make it short, but mm -hmm. eventually the pendulum is going to kind of come back. Exactly. Whether yeah. we're active in it or not, it's going to. So that's where you decide, do you want to be active in it? Because we know it's going to come back. It can't not. Right. That's how so, energy works. That's how energy works. Yeah. It's yeah, it's simple. All right. What else would you like to to talk about water or say about water? Hmm.
I guess I would say even I would even just like drop into it at this moment because it it's wordless in so many ways and the way we know it is feel where it is and the way we can feel it is in this vessel right so even right now when I just tune in to where we've set this space I feel like I'm going to walk away from here moving differently and so I would encourage you see how you feel right now see how your body feels right now because it's influenced us it's going to, I can already feel like, oh, I, I can move into possibilities. Like, hmm, before I may have been like, okay, next thing I've got to do, I've got to create this next course. Like I've got things on my to-do list and I may have just gone right into them after that. But now I feel like, wow, you know what? I'm, I'm going to start to support some things right now that I feel like, and maybe that's going outside and bringing my pup on a walk right now and then getting something to eat because that feels like it, moves with this breathing in and out so I now have access to it and that's what right now it I was gifted with from its medicine that it's infused here so that's what I would sort of say like this is just feel into it and see what it's saying because sometimes it's very quiet and it takes us tuning in to that space and then it completely shifts us yeah i'm thinking that if we are or that we are the fact that we are 70 80 percent water that just the opportunity to behave like water mm -hmm. <laughs> aligns us with physically who we are and probably metaphysically with who we are and so I'm thinking of all the metaphors there, the, the fluidity, the movement, the waves, mm -hmm. the calmness, um, mm -hmm. the, like we talked about before, the ability to move through phases, through different structures entirely with ease and grace, um, the, the, the beauty of it, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, that we are all that, that we are all that. And, you know, so just like a water meditation would be a beautiful mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. to to have as a daily practice to mm -hmm. to consider the nature of my own body as water the nature of my own being mm -hmm. as water yeah and it's a great moment to invite it in yes I, I suppose what i was thinking when i was talking about how what we're doing to water and the other thing that came to me is what we're doing to the oceans with plastic and things like mm -hmm. that I'm thinking that that might be a reflection of our collective consciousness that disconnects from water, that's damaging water, that's causing water, um, water's gonna still just be water, but the bodies of water to be um, less beautifully aware to us that it's, it's a reflection of where our consciousness is, that we're like denying our own roots in some way. So the, I know we say like, oh, the water can't take this anymore. They're, it's only going to take so much and then it's going to do this. That's not, and believe me, the people like that say that's like Sylvia Earle and some of these amazing pioneers. Yes. And I would say that's not true because it is, it's so compassionate mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that it is allowing us to see the damage that we do to ourselves. It's not damaging it. Oh, I get that. that. We are yeah. like, okay, that's, it has so much love and so much compassion that it can allow that. And it's not getting harmed. It's literally showing us like, you're not doing this to me. You're doing this to yourself. And I want to hold you so lovingly in this so that you can see that you are actually beautiful and amazing and you're not that and that's what it that that you you aren't that damaged and i know that you keep putting this 
in the water, but you're not that. And it says like, I'm not that. You may think I'm that. You may think you are that, but you're not. You're not that damage because we all get stuck on like, I've got to work out all this trauma, but you're not that damage. You're not that. You're not damaged. You're not any of that. You actually are that, which you know you are, the that beauty and that perfection. Yes, I completely get that. I, uh, it's, it's not like, it's not like we're able to destroy water, <laughs> mm. but, but the fact that we, we even, I, I think we're disconnected from it in, in that we would throw trash in the water um, because I don't think that really honors anything. On the other hand, the water's kind of like, you know, I'm still here, <laughs> but we're throwing, I mean, taking it back, like it is, it's, it's us. We're just like, right. We're, right. Yeah. We're just dis- exactly. We we're can see our own self, ourselves. Our own- mm-hmm. We're th- bringing this stuff into ourselves. Exactly. And still that part of us that is amazing and beautiful is still there and still holding strong, no matter what we do to ourselves. Well, and it's interesting to think that water actually can be physically a reflection. I mean, you can look in the pond and see yourself. (laughs) So I mean, (laughs) there it is. Not to say that one element is better than the other, but it is. <laughs> Let's just admit <laughs> that water is better than any of the other elements. Water just rocks. <laughs> exactly. Not that we're about hierarchy here better than anything else, but it is. Um, you just mentioned trauma. We didn't talk about trauma in the last hour. Mm-hmm. Can you share a little bit about that? Uh, this, because there is a lot out there about shadow work and healing mm-hmm. your traumas, and and you've got to move mm-hmm. through all that. And um, and I've been on both spectrums. This probably and there was probably yep. something that transcends it. I've been on the. <laughs> I mean, a lot of a lot of what the the training is to to think positive and to kind of do the spiritual bypass and don't don't dwell in the dark spaces. And now now there's over this go into the dark spaces, go into yeah. the the deep yeah. darkness and find your trauma and feel it. Yeah. So yeah. where where are you on that? Right at this moment, well, I think I'm going through some of my traumas, and then sometimes I have more positive thinking. It's me personally. <laughs> <laughs> um there again it's the we're going to go through all of those pieces and we okay can there get we go stuck in yeah. any one of them but one is not absolute truth or the other is not absolute truth okay it's part of the movement through it's part of the movement yeah okay part of the constant movement the ebb and the what is it ebb and mm-hmm. ebb and flow flow thank you ebb and flow. <laughs> obviously the ebb and flow so this is really, I think this is really freeing because I think this propensity that we opened with in the last hour to have to find a place to put something to, to um, categorize mm-hmm. that does help us, but it's, a, it's just a kind of a container where we can explore, where we feel a little bit more safe to explore, but we don't have to get stuck anywhere. And so it's okay if you're thinking positive and avoiding or not, not dwelling in the negative. And it's okay if you're doing the trauma and the shadow work. And it's not like one is better than the other. We go in and out and to just relax in the process. To relax in the, pro- that relaxing is so key. Yeah. And that's yes. what water does. You know, water has this movement, this, this wave, yes. you know, and. <laughs> it's never like, oh my gosh, I'm stuck at the edge now. You don't see it like, Oh my gosh, now my wave is broken. Now what am I going to do? Right. It comes right. back in and it makes another. It's never like right. resistant or like the what the uh, come. Well, it's not even, you know, I mean, it's we, we think the wave is actually moving, but the water is just kind of like letting the wave go through it, which is mm-hmm. also really interesting when you look at what's really happening with waves. It's mm-hmm. it's it's there's a wave that's happening and every every water molecule is just kind of moving with it. It's not actually moving along, you know, uh, the, the 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 length of the ocean, and that's another great metaphor for just where <laughs> whatever whatever comes to me, I you know I, I just kind of surrender to it. Yes, exactly. And we're not losing our former shape Mm-mm. because water doesn't lose its shape exactly, Mm-mm. but it does move with it, and that becomes that spiral movement as opposed to it doesn't forward back side side diagonal Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it doesn't move within those planes of movement it just allows just keeps allowing yeah it's wonderful it's a wonderful physical representation and metaphor for 
the possibility that we hold. <laughs> and of course I go, <laughs> my mind, my poor mind that wants to save the world. Um, I, 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 I can have the vision of what it would look like yep. if we each embodied that. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we each embodied that, the world would be very different. Uh, and, and of course, in my mind, it wants to categorize it. I'm going to say it would be better, but I'm just going to let that go. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and Or you could play with it a little bit, but know okay. that you're playing with it. Like Just observe oh. my playing with it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I do like to do this. I do like to imagine. I do, I do like to live in the place of possibility and think about or envision. Mm -hmm. What if we all woke up and we decided to behave as water? I mean, that's, yep. that's, a, that's a playful place for me. Uh -huh. and, um, and, and, and I suppose also it, it gives me hope. Mm -hmm. um, and I know some people have different views about what hope is. I think it's an expanding energy personally. I, I don't mm -hmm. think it's a, it's not judging as much as it's just kind of a place of expansion. And I think, mm -hmm. um, so anyway, I think I'm just jabbering now <laughs> about <laughs> what I'm getting out of the hour, but I do love the idea of, of having like a water meditation and, yeah. and communing with the water, learning to communicate with the water mm -hmm. and um, also embodying it so that I can become as the water. Yeah. That's what I'm getting out of this hour. Yeah. And the, you don't need to look for the med, like you're not gonna be like, okay, let me Google water meditation now. No, no. This can just be your relationship, which I hope, you know, hopefully empowers people that are listening like, oh, I don't need to go and find it. Like, no, you don't need to no. go and find it. No, it's, no, don't go yours. find it. Yeah. Exactly. Create your own, create your own ritual, your own communication, just like you wouldn't go Google dating conversation. <laughs> I bet if I typed it in right now, that would come up. I'm sure, I'm sure it would come up. Would that be an authentic date? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so curious now what that would be. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be speaking like somebody else and that would be interesting. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, well, I think we're coming up on this hour here too, but I want to make sure that you said everything you want to say about, about water. I, I think water has said everything that it, it wanted to say in this moment in time. And I hope that it gets to expand and relate and interact to everyone who has is here and will continue to be in this place. Okay. And, and I'm I'm happy to have the link to your retreat in Tulum. Yeah. Once I'm working on the I should have that up in the next couple of weeks. Happy to send that over. Yeah, that yeah. would be very fun. And what what is the date of that? November fifth ish, oh, I think. Long time away from now. Long okay. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it's long like we're a little molecule of water in the Colorado Rockies. And yeah. we're actually not, we're snow <laughs> and we're going to melt. And then yeah. by November, we're going to be down there in the Gulf of Mexico. So that's how mm -hmm. much time it is. <laughs> exactly. exactly. All right. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you, Yael, so much for joining me again in the second hour. Thank I, you. I thought it was really interesting. I've, yeah. I've, and thank you everyone for listening because I'm, I'm obviously on this journey with you. I don't have anything mm -hmm. figured out. So you're, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm playing with it with, as long yeah. with all the listeners. Exactly. So. Exactly. Right. It's the play. Thank it is the know. play. It is yeah. the play. All right. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, thank you everybody for listening. And I now close the spiritual forum. <laughs>